So this video is going to help us determine the number of unpaired electrons in a sample. Um, this is one of a couple videos that go together with magnetic susceptibility dealing with one of the labs we did in Chem 363. In particular, for this video, what we're going to be looking at is after we've measured the mass susceptibility, we're going to look at how do you actually calculate the effective magnetic moment um, from that data. And so we'll start off and as well, actually, before that, as a reminder, um, all of this information can be found in the magnetic susceptibility document that I posted to Canvas. Um, and if you read through this document, it'll walk you through both how to use the instrument, um, operation of the balance, and here we can actually see the equation that we're going to solve. Um, for the mass susceptibility, and from that, the paramagnetic susceptibility, and ultimately the effective magnetic moment. So we'll go back to our document here, and we can start walking through our calculations. So when we calculate the effective magnetic moment, the first thing we'll do is we can come down and we can write our equation for the mass susceptibility. And again, that's found in our document on Canvas and can be shown here. Um, this would be the equation that we're going to solve. And these are all of the various pieces that we should have collected the data of from lab. So when we look at this document, um, maybe we'll move it down to get some more space. Um, a couple things. C is our calibration constant. So that's for our particular instrument. Um, and that has a value of 1.14. Um, L is the length or height of the sample in your sample tube. So it was important that we measured in centimeters how much of your samples in the tube. Um, R and R naught are the readings from the magnetic susceptibility balance. So R is the reading um, with your sample. And then R naught is the reading of your empty tube. And then finally, um, M is the mass um, in grams of your various sample. So as we go through this calculation, what I'm going to do is work through some sample data that you saw me collect in the previous video. And that data was for the nickel chloride hexahydrate. So that's the compound we're going to be looking with. And so again, we can see C is a constant 1.14 we measured the length to be in this case 2.95 centimeters the reading with the sample was 1238 the reading of just the empty tube was negative 26 and the mass of the sample in the tube was 0 0.19 grams now one of the things you should watch for whenever you're doing a magnetic susceptibility um, reading is you should get a fairly large positive reading of R. Um, if it doesn't move much away from zero, that tells you you're looking at a diamagnetic compound and this calculation um, just goes out the window. So now that we have all of our values, we can come in and we can plug them into our equation. So we're gonna get our uh, mass susceptibility to be equal to 1.14 times our height 2.95 centimeters and then times the difference in our readings so that's 1238 minus the negative 26 and that's all going to be divided by 10 to the 9th times our mass of 0 0.19 grams and so when I did that out, we got our mass susceptibility to be 1.96 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right. And that's telling us what the magnetic strength per gram of our material is. So what we're going to now need to do is we're going we're gonna to take that number and ultimately determine the magnetic strength per mole of our sample 
and then from that, the actual effective magnetic moment of our sample. Now that we have our mass susceptibility, we're going to use that to calculate the molar susceptibility. And we can do that using the equation where the molar susceptibility is equal to the mass susceptibility times the molecular weight. So that's a fairly straightforward calculation. So coming over to our sample data, we can say that that molar susceptibility is then equal to that 1.96 times 10 to the negative fifth times the molecular weight of the nickel chloride hexahydrate, um, which I calculated to be 237.69 grams per mole. And so the molar susceptibility of this compound is then 4.66 times 10 to the negative third, um, and that'd be a per mole value. Once we have our molar susceptibility, now what we're going to do is we need to determine what we call the diamagnetic correction. All right, and we're going to do that by looking at the handout. So let's write this down, dia magnetic correction and this has to do with all of the atoms and ions that make up your molecule and the magnetic moment that comes even from those spin paired electrons while small um, does play a minor component so in order to do this we're going to look to the handout um, and we'll go back to that in a second I'll show you where to look and we're going to add up the correction constants for all of the atoms and ligands that make up our metal complex. Um, and so if we go back to our handout, here we can see our equation for the mass susceptibility, and it's walking through our calculations. If you go to that last page now, what we can see is we have some um, corrections for ions and molecules. And so what we would be looking for, since in this case we have a nickel complex, is what is the correction for a nickel complex? And that's a first row transition metal, so that would be 13. We have six water molecules, so each water molecule is 13. And then we have two chloride um, ions, and so each of those is 33. Now. The next thing you need to know is all of these numbers have been adjusted and they've been multiplied by 10 to the sixth. So whatever we come up with, we're going to have to multiply that value by 10 to the negative sixth to get our overall value. So we can go back to our calculation and now we can say we had water and we have six of them. So that's six times 13. We had Cl minus, and we had 2 times 23, and then we had our nickel central atom, which in this case was 13. So if we now take this and add all of that together, and then multiply by 10 to the negative sixth, we're going to get a total of our x diam our diamagnetic correction is equal to 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, one thing to note is this should be a very small value, especially in um, comparison to your um, molar susceptibility. Right? If it's not, we have a problem with our calculation somewhere. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate what we refer to as the um, paramagnetic susceptibility. And that is just the difference between our molar susceptibility minus the diamagnetic correction. And so in our sample, we now know our molar susceptibility is 4.66 times 10 to the minus third. And we're going to subtract our 1.26 times 10 to the minus fourth. Again, this 
diamagnetic correction should be very small in comparison to the overall magnetic susceptibility. And one small error I noticed when writing this down is this is actually the X para. Okay, now that we have our paramagnetic susceptibility, now we can finally go for the value we're actually looking for and we can determine the effective magnetic moment. And to do this, we're going to use the equation where our effective magnetic moment is equal to 2.83 times our paramagnetic susceptibility times our temperature, and that all is raised to the one-half power. So now we can plug that in and say the effective magnetic moment is equal to 2.83 times our um, 4.54 times 10 to the negative third times our temperature, which we measured to be 292 Kelvin to the one half power. And our effective magnetic moment is therefore 3 point two six this final value is what we really wanted the whole time this is the number that we can now compare to our spin only magnetic moment and that'll tell us how many unpaired electrons are present in our sample